It'll be, it should be published if you're in the ring. Already? Yeah. All right, where are you at? There it is. That's when I thought we were that one Friday night. All right, uh, let's share the screen. Yeah. Hello, Mackenzie. Feel free to holler out as we go through this. Um, just talk about your big assignment for this unit. Big assignment for this unit is going to be, well, I lost it. Your position papers. Um, so we're going to do an ethics unit. So a lot of the time over the next couple of weeks are going to be no Zoom unless every, every once in a while we might have a discussion. But over the next couple of weeks, really, we're going to have a lot of, you know, spending time uh, where you're able to write and explore research on your own. We have a couple of movies we'll watch in class. If they're movies that can uh, be found on the Internet, I will send you links or tell you where you can find them. But if they're not, I'm just going to have to be out of luck and you're going to have to find other ways to research things. But obviously, you, you know, we're going to use this time to talk about all kinds of different ethics. If sometimes we'll have a Zoom, but many times we're not. The culminating assignment for this unit is your position paper. Um, a position paper is where you write and take a stance on a controversial issue and you tell me what the how things should be. You take a stand. You tell me what is what it should be. Um, and this uh, position paper is pretty much linked up here. You're going to take a stand on a specific ethical dilemma. We'll talk about topics here in just a second. In anatomy, health sciences, or medicine. And you're going to write a position paper of at least five pages. A lot of people groan when I say that. But if you do everything you need to do, it's going to be no problem at all getting the five pages. Um, that is one of the limiting things that people usually don't do as well on this thing because they wait until the last minute and realize that it takes a little while to write five pages, but if you do it well, it'll have no problem getting the five pages and that should be, you know, uh, harder to, to limit it around five pages and then keep it under eight or nine if you do it really well. But you need to have some type of introduction explaining the history, background of your ethical, ethical dilemma. That should take about a page to a page and a half where you're going to tell me why this is an ethical dilemma. Was it always an ethical dilemma? Did it used to be something that everybody agreed on and now we don't? Did it used to be something that was a outlawed practice, but now it's controversial whether or not to allow it at all? Um, you know, ethics change over time and they have for the past, you know, 10,000 years of human history. But um, so give me how we got here for your ethical dilemma. Are there any laws about your ethical dilemma? Are, did, did someone try to fix your ethical dilemma before and fail? Or did somebody succeed, but then their, 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 their success has been rolled back? So give me the history of how we got to 2020 when it comes to your ethical dilemma. Next thing is for you to take a stand. Be specific. If your stand is that we should run our, I'm going to make something up so you don't, so uh, you don't, um, it'll be more AP environmental than, than anatomy because I don't want to steal your thunder right in your paper. So if your position is that we should get all of our electricity from hamsters in cages, then you give me a plan. We're going to have a spot in town devoted to these hamsters in cages. If we have 15 hamsters for every person, we can make enough electricity. Here's the stats that show that on and on and on. Be very, very detailed. What does this mean at every level of government? Does the federal government have to be involved? Does the state government have to be involved? Is this something that we don't need laws on at all? Is this something we have to repeal laws to get to work? This is you waving your magic wand and creating the perfect ethical situation for your ethical dilemma. Back it up with statistics, link articles. If we do this, everything's gonna be all right. And then be sure to cite any specific detail either in the paper or cite a page. Everybody always asks, do you have to be MLA? Do I have to have, you know, APA format, MLA format? I am not an English class. I am not a format Nazi. Do whatever you need to do. But when you say, 32% of all people 
like to drink Pepsi with their barbecue, I need you to cite your article that you got that from in some way, somehow. According to the New England Journal of Medicine, 32%, blah, 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 blah. Or in March of 1987, uh, the, the um, Antarctic Research Center released a study saying blah, 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 blah. Don't just say a fact without me knowing where you got that fact. Okay? And if you do that well, you should look at the body of your paper, two to three pages. Now, the next step is where a lot of people screw it up to give a really solid debate, to give a really solid ethical position, you've got to examine your flaws. I always use the example of eight mile. You know what eight mile is? Okay, eight mile, the Eminem with the rap competition that James probably hadn't seen it, but the rest of us probably had. Okay, well, in eight mile, Eminem won the last rap battle because he started off his rap battle by taking all of the things that the other guy was going to say that was bad about him and saying it already. And then when the other guy, when it was the other guy's turn, he kind of just stumbled over words because he had already taken all of his flaws away. The best arguments already know their weaknesses. And so this next step is really important. What are the weaknesses of your position? How would somebody argue against your position? Okay. Be careful. And don't make this more convincing than this. I've had it happen many times where I can, I'm reading the paper and I get to this part of the paper and I say, well, doggone, your, your argument is weak. You're really showing me how your argument is completely weak. Because then we got to go to that last step, about a page, a page or a half a page to a page, conclude by reaffirming your position in spite of its weakness. So in spite of all of these things that I've just said, my position is still superior because blah, blah, blah. One of my dad's big rules, he, my, my, my dad taught history and we had to write a bunch of papers in AP history. And he was, his big thing was you never say I in a paper. You never say I believe or I won't or I think. And he would always say, because nobody cares what you think. And that is one way to write a paper and you could write this paper without saying. But I'm not gonna say that because I want to know what you think. Okay, what he would always say was, instead of saying, I think we should raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, you say, we should raise the minimum wage for to $15 an hour. So instead of saying, prefacing everything by saying, I believe, blah, 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 nobody cares what you believe, just say it. This is your paper, this is your position, you paint your picture in the most convincing way. Okay. You are making your position. Now, the flip side of that is that you don't be wishy-washy. I've had people write papers where I read the whole thing, five pages, and I've got no idea which side their position is. They've explained both sides beautifully. And I've had people straight up say, I can see both sides of this argument. That is not the assignment. The assignment is not for you to explain both sides of an ethical dilemma. The assignment is for you to take a stand. This is the way it should be. Let me show you why. Make sense? Ready to talk about some topics? Any questions before we talk about some topics? Go ahead. Okay. So topics, I need your topic by this Friday. If you're in person in class, obviously you can just tell me. If you're not in person, you can email me or let me know over the Zoom. We'll probably have another Zoom to, to check on this, either Thursday or Friday. Um, I need to know your topic by November 13th. If in class on fourth period, November 13th, I don't have a topic from you. I'm either gonna ask you sitting in front of me, or I'm gonna send you an email and say, hey, haven't got a topic from you, let me know something. Then we're gonna have your paper due December 4th, about three weeks away. Should be plenty of time to research, to fully, Think about what you want to write about and to really get some solid stuff down on paper. Just like your dissection was the big pro the big product of the second six weeks, this is the major product of your third six weeks. Okay, talk about some topics. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring out the whiteboard here and just brainstorm out. And if y'all get stuck, I'll throw some out as well. So ideas. Um, one more question. Sure. What would 
wouldn't necessarily determine whether or not it was anatomical related or medicine related. Like mine that I was thinking was old people should not be allowed to drive. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a bigger I'm gonna give a broad category, and you can make it more specific out of that. Okay, so the broad category is gerontology issues. Smart board is not happy with me today. Okay, gerontology. Old people. Old people, elderly, getting getting being aged. So example of that would be old people should not be allowed to drive. Example of that should be kind of along those same lines. Let me fix this. End of life decision. Who gets to make the call? You know, it's the end of life decision. Who gets to make the call? When do you get to make the call? Um, lots of issues with gerontology where you're talking about, you know, um, discrimination based upon age. Um, <laughs> old people can't drive. You know, uh, old people should be, be in forced retirement. Um, you know, retirement issues. Um, we should have a plan that, that pays all retirement for certain people. You know, I'm saying Social Security could be an ethical dilemma when it comes to old age. Okay. Obviously, the big one I've already talked about a bunch is abortion and uh, and you got end of life decisions. You also have prenatal decisions. Um, I always warn people that abortion is a very, very tough paper to write because it is filled with so much emotion. How many papers in the past 13 years I've been teaching this class that I have received that said, here's, you know, um, abortion should be banned in all cases because the Bible says so. Got to be better than that. Okay. You gotta do better than that. You gotta give me statistics. You gotta show me why the world will be a better place in either case. And in both cases, it is a tough argument because on one side you're saying that it's okay to kill little babies, whatever view you have on that. On the other side, you're saying it's okay to reach inside of a woman's uterus and tell her what she can't do. That is a tough ethical dilemma out of 13 years Seems like about every year I have somebody that wants to write that paper, and I think I maybe have one or two in the history of it that were good papers. So just be careful about that one. I'm not saying you can't write it. I'm saying it's a very, very tough one. With that one, how yeah. would you do the plan? Like you were going to argue abortion should remain legal. What would the plan? What would the plan for that be? How do you have a plan if it's already still legal federally? You would need to 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 show what you're going to change okay because if you're saying nothing should change period that's not really an ethical dilemma that's where we are does that make sense other issues other ethical issues when it comes to medicine anatomy healthcare, prolonging health. life sustaining treatment kind of this one yeah okay i mean i hear you you can get a open up a whole can of worms with this one you can absolutely go all day all kinds of different things should should you be able to clone yourself should you be able to pick your baby from the bottom of a long glass tube should i be able to take a sperm sample and an egg sample from the two people and pick and choose the best genes from those two people i want to should I be able to pluck a piece of hair out of James's hair, run over to somewhere and find a gene in James that makes him so good looking and isolate that gene and make sure my baby gets that gene? <laughs> All kinds of things with genetic engineering, both in humans and not humans. With genetic engineering. Would surrogacy be the best? Sur I'd, I'd put surrogacy more in this, but definitely 
is an issue, you know? Uh, should a woman ever lose her right to her child, even if she signed it away? You know, all kinds of issues that come into that. Now, another issue that when I started writing this, when we started doing this assignment in 2008, 2007, was a way bigger issue than it is now, is marijuana legalization. In 2007, marijuana legalization is a good paper, write it. In 2020, it's not really much of a paper because it's not much of an ethical dilemma anymore. From a scientific viewpoint, from a law viewpoint, it kind of still is because you got big chunks of the country where it's illegal, but it's not much of an ethical dilemma from a scientific viewpoint. So anymore. Legalizing or decriminalizing all drugs. You know, illicit drugs, there's, there's papers that are there when it comes to illicit drug use. Should health departments provide needles? There's all kinds of papers in that category right there. Should it was Oregon's plan to decriminalize all illicit drugs, a good idea. That's absolutely a paper. Because even though I would say the marijuana issue is not really a paper anymore because it's kind of a consensus. That, yeah, say, saying that I'm gonna just legalize that I'm gonna let you use any drugs you want to with all willy nilly is, is a little bit different. And that law doesn't really do that. Right, which it's, some people don't understand that. I've heard people come in and they're acting like, Pass it out. As like, I think it was, um, I, I saw a comedian or something say, I'm going to go to Oregon, I can smoke crack now or something like, like that. Eh, not, <laughs> not, not really true, but um, but yeah, that's definitely an issue there. Something that, as, as marijuana has become less of an issue, something that's becoming more of an issue since I've been doing this class are gender issues. I thought it was going to be related to marijuana, but that was not. What do I mean? Pronouns all kinds of things you know what is gender Our and, and sex the same thing. well dude, that, that's that, that's a paper that's a paper okay um i had i've had people do gender issues and kind of along with that i would say sexuality issues okay um but yeah you know Discrimination based upon gender, discrimination based upon sexuality, um, legal status of gender issues and sexuality. You know, should there be a third checkbox for gender? You know, that, that's a paper. Um, something we don't really get into as much, and I'm gonna put a different color so I can fit them over here. Um, research issues. So like um, animal research, um, Animal research, um, ethics when it comes to doing research in general. Uh, you know, um, I, I'm trying to remember which one it was, but smallpox vaccine. Can't remember the man's name, but I'm pretty sure smallpox vaccine guy injected himself to make sure it was okay, and then exposed himself to smallpox. That is highly unethical when it comes to research, but he saved the world. So How he himself. How's it unethical? He chose to inject himself. Because that do it's not double blind. It's not a uh it's not a trial. Um it is like, ah, irresponsible it's because you're putting yourself at risk. So I mean yeah. all kinds of reasons. Okay, but but all kinds of research issues. You, I've had lots of people that wrote about um animal research. And animal research is absolutely a, uh, uh, an ethical dilemma because you have one side of the, the bar that says it's animals, you know, we're going to do what we're going to do to make sure humans are safe. Then you have the other side that are actually seeking personhood for some animal species. There's a movement to seek personhood, especially for primates and, and give them the legal rights of humans. That I'm not joking. There's a whole movie about it. Um, I wish, I wish I, I'll look it up, look, look up the name of that movie real quick while we're thinking right. of anything else. What rights are we talking about? Like the right to be free, the right to not be caged. <laughs> oh my God. Where they going to live? Wherever they want to. There's a movie, let's see if I can find a movie. 
Great ape personhood. It's laws, laws that are trying to make great apes, great ape personhood. Unlocking the, unlocking the cage is the name of the movie. Would that mean that all zoos had to like just let their animals go? Let just I'm just telling you. I mean, that's that's, that's, that's a good one. Just send them out the front gate. Yeah. Have good luck. I mean, you and you look at the like, zoos in general. Okay. You know, the, the all kinds of ethical issues. Veganism surrounding zoos. Uh, sure, diet issues. I'm gonna put. I don't remember if there's anything else we're not covering. Um, kind of along this line, but childhood issues, like what at what age should a person be able to make their own medical decisions? You know, if what's magical about this number 18? And you know, is it different if we're talking pregnancy issues? Um that's all kinds of things. So I would say, like you know, maybe teen health decisions. Would uh, alcohol age fall under that? Sure, but you could. I would also kind of put put it in that world too with illicit drugs. Um, but yeah, teen health issues in general. I would say because you know, is it is it okay to refuse uh, refuse health care for your child? You know. Um, based upon a religious reason, that's something that the courts have dealt with before. You know, some some religions don't believe in um, transfusions, and so is it should it be legal to deny your seven year old a transfusion that they need to live because of religious reason? Because I, I think they they ruled that you better give that child a transfusion. <laughs> but I could hear the argument the other way. I, mean, I would say that even though that the courts have ruled that way doesn't end the ethical dilemma because you're still removing some religious autonomy. Yeah. Anything else that you can think of that fits into our world and is an ethical dilemma, I'm 100% with you and I will probably support you. Now, there's some things, like I said, there's some things I would probably say when you tell me your topic, you need to be more specific. Your position is too broad or your position is too uh maybe too narrow you can't get five pages out of that but i'll talk to you as you give me your your topic thursday if you have any ideas about some about some ideas off of me if you're at home shoot me an email i'll be glad to go back and forth with you about it if you pick a topic you start writing and you want to change your topic odds are that'll be fine as well i just need you to kind of settle on what you're starting with by friday so that one, I don't have to read 11 papers about abortion. And two, I, because if somebody else, somebody grabs, I'm probably gonna try to talk you out of it to, to, to go in another direction. And two, so that I can, you know, make sure that you're thinking in the right direction and you're already going started. So you don't wait till the last minute. Questions from anybody? All right, I'm gonna end the Zoom. I'll put this Zoom video up. Kind of go through this like this. You do not have to do one of the topics we listed today. There's all kinds of other topics. Anything that is a, an ethical issue. Um, I didn't mention a couple, couple things off the top of my head that I didn't mention. Um, organ donation. You know, that's, you know, requiring people to be organ donors or, um, you know, the, the, the organ donation list, the ethics of it just being a waiting list. And since this person was first there ahead of you and how we how we determine that list, that that's that's a huge one. Um, one of the things we're talking about with the movie right now is access to health care. Access to health care is when I had this exact same uh, assignment when I was in medical school. I, I just took this medical school assignment from ethics class and just shifted it to my anatomy class. I wrote on uh, health care. Uh, the, the, the last unchecked freedom in the land of the free title. That was a good one, I think. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah. You know, write it however you want to. And also, I've also had people in the past that were worried about writing a paper because they could tell that I held strong beliefs about things. I promise you, I will never grade you based upon my beliefs, ever. It, I, I encourage you to take a stance that challenges everyone's beliefs, including my own. 
Um, one of the greatest position papers ever written was Jonathan Swift. Um, a modest proposal. Y'all read that in Miss Everclass? Absolutely. Jonathan Swift was said, there's too many people in London. We need to start eating babies because it'll solve our food yeah. problem and, and it'll solve our overpopulation because we're eating the babies and we're taking them out. Beautiful, logical paper. Obviously, everybody who reads it is going to be very shocked. Obviously, his intent was not to make us start eating babies. His intent was to challenge our ethics. And that's what I want you to do. Okay? All right. You can make an argument.